Let's now consider some writings by John Stuart Mill on the macroeconomics of money and also demand. We're again turning to Mill's book, Essays on Some Unsettled Questions of Political Economy, and the particular essay of the influence of consumption on production. Again, Mill was writing this in his early 20s, and that's remarkably impressive. Mill was trying to answer a long-standing question in classical economics, namely whether there will always be enough consumption for that which is produced. Under Say's law, this has been interpreted in a number of different ways, but one way of viewing it is the claim that production is the source of market demand, so if you have some goods and services produced, that creates income, that income is translated into demand for other goods and services, and there cannot, according to this hypothesis, be a general overproduction of goods and services. Here we have Mill trying to figure out all of this debate and tie it up in one nice, neat framework. And Mill proceeds by setting up a verbal model to try to address all these questions. This verbal model starts with the notion of the division of labor, as had been emphasized and developed by Adam Smith. Now here's a key part of the argument. Division of labor is going to mean specialization, and producers are just doing a small number of things which they invest heavily in. And according to Mill and also Smith, this means those producers will be investing heavily in fixed capital for particular modes of production. Examples of fixed capital would be, say, machinery and equipment, but for Mill, the existence of this fixed capital means that at most points in time, there exists what modern economists would call excess capacity. That is, there is idle capital sitting around, and if only there were more demand, producers would be happy to offer more of their goods and services to the market. Mill then states it quite clearly and coherently that additional demand stimulates output. There is some idle capital in production processes, and if more demand is forthcoming, the suppliers are happy to produce more at a profit, and they will feel they are better off. Mill offers a very early statement of what later became aggregate demand macroeconomics. Mill's account is an early version of some Keynesian-like arguments, but in some key regards it also deviates from Keynes. So, for instance, after explaining all of this, Mill states that this general expansion of capital motivated by an increase in demand is not, in general, desirable for an economy. And Mill notes, and he writes, it is a certain proof that some general delusion is afloat. Mill fears there will be a general overexpansion of production, a general glut, and that many commodities will end up in excess. In some regards, Mill is anticipating the later arguments of Hayek's business cycle theory, and also the models of Robert Lucas developed in the 1970s, where suppliers are tricked by inflation into producing too much or supplying too much labor. It's an interesting vision of a capitalist economy offered up by Mill. There are two sides. On one side, there's excess capacity and a general unhappiness of producers, and on the other side, there's a lot of stimulus and at least temporarily more production, but also this tends to end in some kind of economic disaster because everyone starts producing too much and those new goods and services at some point in time are no longer profitable. Reading Mill, one wonders if there's any way a capitalist economy can in some manner thread this needle and end up at exactly the right level of demand. This is a question which Mill doesn't really answer. Mill returns to the questions about Say's law toward the end of the essay, and he makes the simple point that the demand to hold money means that Say's law is not always valid. So there can be a general production of goods and services, and yes, that generates income, but maybe consumers won't spend that income. They may simply hold on to money, the velocity of money will fall, and that increase in aggregate supply does not translate into a corresponding increase in aggregate demand. This was a point very similar to what later became a big part of Keynesian economics, and Mill nailed it really quite clearly in 1829-30. This essay is online, and of course it's recommended. It's a little dense, but it's actually pretty clear. For further background, you should view our videos on Say, part of what we present on Malthus, and also our video on Adam Smith's Wealth of, Wealth of Nations, Book 2, Chapter 2. But what's really striking about Mill is just how advanced this essay is, and to understand its importance, it's worthwhile looking at sources such as Keynes's general theory, 
Hayek's business cycle theory, and the writings of Robert Lucas in the 1970s on, for instance, the Islands model. This is one of the most remarkable early essays on macroeconomics because it's pointing really quite clearly and insightfully toward all of these later contributions.